your wedding day has come and it's finally the morning of your wedding. The makeup's getting set up, hair's getting set up, you got some snacks around a table, your dress is hanging up by the window. The groomsmen are coming in, setting up the N64 for some Mario Kart or some football on TV. But what else should you be expecting during prep? Well, fret no more, because I sit down with some of the leading wedding industry professionals and ask their opinion about what you should be expecting during the prep session of your wedding day. So I always account for two hours for the bride to get ready, hour for hair, an hour for makeup. Generally, of course, your hair and makeup artist might tell you that it's going to take less time, but it probably won't. Nice try, but no. Not going um, first, not going last. Yeah, you're the like if you are a bride. I mean, I guess I'm assuming traditional bride, you know, whatever. But um, if you're a bride, not going first would be key because you don't want to be sitting in your hair and makeup for too long, but you also shouldn't be last because you can always go somewhere else while somebody else is getting ready. Um, making sure that you eat is key and don't just eat donuts. Like eat protein, eat some carbs, eat some fruit, like eat a well-balanced breakfast. Even if you aren't hungry or you don't eat breakfast, do it anyway because I really don't need you not eating until five o'clock at night and fainting. And for the guys, just making sure, you know, some guys like to take the time to mess with their hair or shave first thing in the morning mm -hmm. to just plan for the time that it would take you to do these things. Yeah. Um, you don't want to be rushed getting ready, but you also don't want to sit around for two hours. Right. But most time, like, the guys like hanging out in the morning and like not just rushing, rushing, rushing. So it's accounting for the time of, you know, but it's also putting boutonnieres on. The other thing that I just thought of that I hear a lot from couples is like the guys want to go golfing in the morning or skiing yeah. in the morning. Realistically, you don't have time for that. So account for that time some other part of the weekend. Do it the day before, do it the day after. I understand you want time with your guys, but there are other times to do that. And these people are not just, hopefully, not just going to be there for 24 hours. Um, so think about that before and after don't ski the morning of your wedding. You break a leg, that's probably gonna be a problem. Like, just a thought. That's also, fantastic. emotionally, don't golf before your wedding and be angry because you had a bad game. Yeah, that happens too. Don't do that, don't be that guy. Don't play the hardest course ever <laughs> the day before your wedding and then you're just pissed off. Prep day, of course, is something that us and planners and whoever else is involved in that morning session really take our timeline super seriously. So one thing that I always do is I give a buffer of time in the beginning to set up and a buffer of time at the end just in case because chances are something's going to go over. A photographer might steal the bride when I need her in the chair or, you know, there could be a small issue or bump in the road that distracts us from our timeline. So I do like to leave those buffers especially with setting up because you never know what you're walking into when you go to set up somewhere. I may not have one window and we have to go try to find a new place with some natural light or the outlet might be on the other side of the room from where we need it. So we do like to leave some buffer so that we can set up accordingly and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. Another thing that I always let people know too is make sure that you come prepared because we're gonna come prepared so if you have a bridesmaid or someone who comes with their hair wet or who, you know, is like, oh, I forgot that my appointment was at this time. Let me go shower really quick. That messes up the whole schedule. So I guess just expect that things, no matter how hard every vendor tries, <laughs> will not always go on point because you're dealing with many personalities, many priorities, and lots of people that we're all trying to make happy. So things don't always go as planned, but we try to make our make sure at our best that they do. <laughs> okay, hair and makeup usually runs longer. Uh, stylists will usually say that their window is 30 to 45 minutes. I like to schedule an hour, and if that's really insane to them, I would say 45 minutes. But at least you have an extra 15 minutes if you do schedule them by hours to catch up. Also, I would make a schedule of like, the, you know, if women are getting their hair done, who needs to be where at what time? It's not like, hey, we're starting at 10 and, you know, it's going to 12 and somebody shows up at 11.59. So we need to have, like, as soon as Marie's done, Joy is going. Or not we. You guys need to eat. Um, 
it will start off slow and then all of a sudden it's gonna just like compound and it's like you need to do this, you need to do that, we need to get on the bus and we need to go. So um, also for prep, the photographer video will come in, they'll ask for your invites um, and things like that, have them already prepared. I say put them in a shoe box and have them there. That things take longer than they think that they will. Um, makeup artists run out of stuff or they're, they're come prepared or hair takes longer. Couples, brides should know that they should never be the last person because then they don't wanna hurry the hair or the makeup on the bride and they should not be the first person in case they wanna eat or drink or whatever. And they should hire somebody that they trust that has done plenty of weddings, that did their trial, that they're happy with the trial and they have enough of a team to manage, let's say, 10 girls. If it's just you and the maid of honor, obviously you have a lot less to worry about versus 15 girls that are waiting in queue and you only have two hair and makeup people. That's a disaster, okay? Always plan for more time than what you think. If the hair and makeup artist says, we're gonna be done at 11, realistically think 11.30 noon, okay? It's always better to cushion time because we could fill that time with photos right. and video and chatting and mimosas versus seriously. You yeah. can fill the time with something, but you cannot create time that you don't have. Right. It's never going to happen like that. Always schedule more time that way you think you need. I think prep be prepared to have built in extra time in case things run long so that you don't end up affecting the rest of the day because if hair and makeup takes longer than you think and then all of a sudden your first look is an hour later that then runs into ceremony, into reception and you're behind all day. So give yourself extra time always. I would say a lot enough time for the emotions because you might get emotional. You might need a minute to go wipe your tears. You might need some time to breathe or, or meditate or whatever that is because you're going through a different life experience. It's a big day, a lot of pressure. Account for the fact that um, add in enough time for hair and makeup because that's gonna, for the ladies and sometimes men, right? It's gonna take some, some more time than we think. Make sure that um, everybody that's helping you get dressed is already dressed so that in your photos you don't have people in pajamas helping you get ready. Um, make sure you eat. Make sure that um, that you're giving yourself enough time to get dressed, put on your shoes, your accessories, and that you also have enough time to just to to just do everything. It's going to take more time than you think. So just allot yourself some padding in your timeline to really be a human and to experience things. If everything's so back to back and you can't experience things, you're going to say, "Wait, what just happened?" They should expect that hair and makeup are going to take much longer than they actually think. In my experience, the bride's usually somewhere in the middle of getting her hair and makeup done, so that way she has enough time to get into her dress. Um, always give yourself extra time, for sure, because it will take longer than you think. Um, also, um, always have lots of food on hand for your bridal party and for yourself. Always have food and drinks available for everyone. Uh, you know, time. Yeah, makeup and hair, it's going to take long, especially multiple people getting done. You guys, you're easy, right? Like, no, don't, uh, don't drink too much beforehand. But yeah, the girls, they just kind of a lot for, especially if you're doing an outdoors. We were in the Bahamas, and the bride was an hour and a half late to her ceremony. So for an hour and a half, there's roughly 80 people sitting underneath the Bahamian sun, waiting for that's some that's some cold-hearted stuff you know just be cognizant of people's time schedule stuff like that so try to move things along you know it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect it just comes a point where it has to be done and you got to get to the church <laughs> you have to give yourself time so if you have a large bridal party um make sure you start early on in the day have make sure your photographer videographer has time to do all their shots before the ceremony, so you have to give yourself time. You should just know that anything you plan will always take longer than you expect it to, whether it's getting in your dress, a button popping off, something that needs to be repaired or cleaned last minute. We even had a, a groom forget his purple tie back home in Chicago, so they had to go buy a new one at the last minute. So just keep in mind, build yourself some extra time in, and know that it'll probably take a little bit longer than expected, but that's okay. Time uh, primarily, you, time goes by really fast that day. 
what a 12 hour day is, it, it feels like it's six really. So you need to make sure you're allocating enough time for hair and makeup, to get ready, to get dressed for the photos to be taken, and to get to wherever you're getting married and wherever you're having your event. There's probably photos in between their time. You also wanna make sure that you're not allocating anything for yourself to be done, except for getting ready for your day. You're not gonna be putting together flowers that day. You're not, there's nothing that is more important to you than you being ready for your day. So that means being stress-free as possible. And if you're giving yourself responsibilities for that day other than just preparing yourself and being with those that are in that room with you getting ready, you're going to be stressed. You don't wanna be stressed. So time and don't give yourself any extra responsibilities that you shouldn't be doing that day other than getting married and getting ready for that, for getting married. You expect to have it go longer than you anticipate it will because if you are waiting on eight different people to get their shit together at the same time, someone's gonna have to go to Starbucks and they're gonna be stuck in a line for 20 minutes. You know, traffic is gonna be an issue for some people. So buffer in some extra time during your getting ready period, whether you're bringing in lunch to save the groomsmen from having to go out and venture into the wilderness for lunch, you know, that could always be a bad idea too. Um, try to have things come to you as much as possible. That eliminates a lot of stress as well. Uh, and then, you know, just buffer time. We hope this episode of Vendors helps you on your wedding planning. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and to share to make sure you and your fellow planning couples don't miss a single episode. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to check out our entire conversation in the podcast. You can find all of today's vendors and their contact information in the details below this video. And be sure to check out all of our episodes about these amazing wedding industry professionals. We'll see you next time on Vendors. Vendors is produced and edited by Night Owls Media. More information can be found at nightowlsmedia.com.